Good evening. This is Pastor Mike Creekmore, pastor at BMU Baptist Church in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, tonight to this broadcast. I'll be sharing once again about angels. We've talked about uh, so far up to this point, we've talked about the reality of angels. Uh, angels are real. They do exist. Uh, we've talked about last uh, time that we were together. We've talked about uh, how um, angels, uh, we do have a guardian angel. We have angels that care for us. And so we'll continue this study tonight. And we're talking about tonight the responsibility of angels. What do angels do every single day uh, that they are involved in our lives? What do you think angels do every day? I mean, what do they do? Are they just flying around flapping their wings to the tune, I'll fly away? What do angels do on an average day? That's what I want to talk about tonight for just a few moments. And really, they have four primary responsibilities that I'll be talking about. Number one, they proclaim. Number two, they protect. Number three, they punish. And number four, they praise. So I'm going to take these four things tonight, and I'm going to talk about uh, daily responsibilities, daily works of angels. And I'll be sharing along the way uh, some Bible texts with you. Let's first talk about the first function that I mentioned tonight, and that is that angels proclaim. So what do they proclaim? They proclaim what God tells them to proclaim. In other words, their proclamations are first dictated by God the Father, then delivered by God the Son, and then declared by the angels of God. Let me give you an example of that. An illustration would be Revelation chapter 1. Now, let me ask you a question. Who recorded uh, the book of Revelation? John did, right? Okay, then, how did John know what to write? Well, look back at verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that word translated revelation means to reveal something. It was used in John's day to describe an artist who had painted something or sculptured something they would make an announcement at a certain time and the masterpiece would be revealed. They would place a sheet over it and at a certain time the artist would unveil the artwork so that everyone could see it. Well, that's where the word revelation comes from. That's what revelation means, unveiling, uncovering the masterpiece. Now, if you look at the sequence, you will find it as follows. God, Jesus, angel. John, scripture, you and me. Now look at Revelation 22, 6. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must surely or shortly rather take place. And then in verse 16, I, Jesus, has sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And so uh, what do angels do? They proclaim. Remember, it was the angel that proclaimed the birth of Jesus. In Luke chapter 1, now in the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Nazareth, a Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph to the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And then in verse 30, the angel continues. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there will be no end. Here's one of God's 
good news angels proclaiming to Mary that she's going to have a baby, not just any baby, but the Lord Jesus Christ, who would be the Savior of the world. Now, not only uh, at his birth did they proclaim, but also uh, angels were there at his death. Do you remember the proclamation of the angel made at the tomb in John chapter 20? The Bible tells us that they also escorted Jesus there on the Mount of Olives where Jesus will return. And we're told of that in Acts chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. It was God's angels who proclaimed to the disciples, why are you standing here looking and gazing? This same Jesus has left, is going to come again. Keep following him. And then in Matthew chapter 28, do you remember the word angel means their messenger? They are messengers. Now, they don't write the message. They just deliver it. They are like in our day, Western Union. They don't write messages. They just deliver them. And so that is one of the responsibilities of, of angels. They are uh, delivery boys. They uh, deliver the message. They proclaim the message. They carry the message out. Well, let me give you a second responsibility uh, tonight as we study about angels. Not only do angels proclaim, uh, but they also protect. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, we spoke about this last Wednesday night in detail. In Matthew chapter 2, now here we read how the angels offered protection for Jesus during his earthly ministry. Do you remember the temptation of Jesus? It's recorded in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And then when Jesus was in the garden praying, do you remember that? Again, angels appeared uh, uh, to Jesus. Then in Luke chapter 22, how wonderful it is uh, that an average day in the life of an angel involves protection. Psalm 91, he shall give them his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. God's protection. Psalm chapter 34, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Praise God for his deliverance. Praise God for his protection. And then in Daniel chapter 22, uh, or verse uh, 22 in chapter 6, my angel sent his angel, my God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Daniel passed through the fire unhurt because of the protection of God's angel. Do you remember when the angels came to Solomon? Uh, they were there on a God sent errand uh, to um, uh, uh, mercy to save Lot. When the vile mob gathered to assault Lot, the angels protected him and struck his enemies with blindness. Remember that? Uh, absolutely God's protection. In Billy Graham's book, Angels, 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 he gives the account of Dr. S.W. Mitchell, who was a Philadelphia neurologist who had gone to bed after a long day. Suddenly he was awakened by someone knocking at his door. Opening his door, he found a little girl poorly dressed and deeply upset. She told him her mother was sick and asked him if he would please come with her. It was a bitterly cold night, snowing lightly there in Philadelphia. But uh, though he was bone tired, Dr. Mitchell dressed and followed the girl. He found the mother desperately ill with pneumonia. After arranging for medical care, he complimented the sick woman on the intelligence and persistence of her little daughter. The woman looked at him strangely and then said, my daughter died a month ago. Her shoes and coat are in the closet uh, there in the den. 
Dr. Mitchell, amazed and perplexed, went to the closet, opened the door, and there hung the very coat worn by the little girl that night who had brought him to tend to her mother. It was a, uh, a coat that was warm and dry, and it could not have possibly been out in that wintry night. Could the doctor have been called in the hour of desperate need by an angel appeared as this woman's young daughter? Was this the work of God's angels on behalf of a sick woman? It is safe to say that angels oftentimes guard God's people and keep them from physical danger. We see that time and time in Scripture. Revelation chapter 7 records the supernatural perfect protection from, an, from angels that provides deliverance for the 144,000 Israelites who will witness the gospel of Jesus Christ during the seven years of tribulation. In Acts chapter 5, we find the account of the apostles being in jail. And in verse 9, here's what it says. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. In Hebrews chapter 1, and verse 14, And they not are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who inherit salvation. Who knows? Who knows, my friend, tonight, how many of you, including myself, have slipped past death's door because an angel was watching over you. The Bible tells us that angels are sent to protect us and to give us deliverance. Some of the close calls that you and I have had We've been so close to death's door, but because God sent an angel to minister to you who are children of God in doing so, God has given you more time to serve Jesus, more time to win souls, more time to use your influence to point others to Jesus. God has given you more time. God has given me more time because he's sent these ministering spirits to help us in our times of need. Now you may feel uh, the forces of God with you at times, and certainly he is. Uh, you, you, uh, you may not feel him there at times, uh, but he's always there. And I want you to hear that. Uh, the Bible is true. And the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Acts chapter 27 this is the account of one of Paul's shipwrecks. Remember the story in verses 23, 24, 25, and 26. And that's exactly what happened in this text is what I've been sharing the whole time tonight. An angel of the Lord came to Paul that night and said, listen, it's going to be scary. You're going to have a shipwreck. That's what he said. But don't worry. Everyone is going to be safe. They were there to give protection and deliverance and encouragement. Thank God, thank God tonight for the protection of angels. You see, my friend, angels proclaim, angels protect. Let me give you a third ingredient tonight to be mindful of. Angels also punish. Hebrews 1.7 says, and the angels and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and, and his ministers a flame of fire. Now, uh, the flame of fire speaks of the judgment of God and the burning speaks of the angels who carry out God's decisions. Angels deliver punishment and judgment according to God's principles of righteousness in Genesis 19, 13, we read where a couple of angels destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah. It was the angels that wreaked destruction upon those two wicked cities. They punished the immorality of the people. And so angels also carry out the commission of punishment. In 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 35 and going forward, the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men of the Assyrian camp. When the people got up the next morning, 
There were dead bodies everywhere. In First Chronicles chapter 21, verses 16 and going forward, the angels almost destroyed the city of Jerusalem. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth with a drawn sword in his hand extended over Jerusalem. And then David and the elders clothed in sackcloth fell down on their faces to the ground in humility. In Acts chapter 12, verses 23 and going forward, an angel smote King Agrippa because he didn't give praise to God. An angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. In Isaiah chapter 37, verses 36 going forward, we read that the death angel smote Egyptians firstborn. Then the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. And when the people got up the next morning, as I've already indicated a couple of minutes ago, there were dead bodies everywhere. It was an angel that stopped Abraham from killing Isaac in Genesis 22. Do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do any harm to this youngster. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. And if you remember, a ram in the thicket was provided. Just the average day in God's angels, they proclaim, they carry out God's message, they give the message of God, they protect Thank God for his protection. Thank God that he dispatches. Thank God that he has a guardian angel for us. Thank God that angels are there to protect us. But also, there's another side of this. Angels punish. They carry out God's punishment. And I wonder uh, tonight as we dwell in a time of unrighteousness, how God must be judging not only America, but this world. Have you ever seen a year like 2020? A year of perfect vision, but what a year it has been indeed. Uh, with the pandemic and all the unrest and everything else going on, what a year. But I think God is getting our attention. We must remember that he is God. He's the one and true living God. There is no God but Jehovah God. And we need to remember that in these days and praise him. And that leads us to a fourth thing that I find that angels do. Not only do angels proclaim, not only do angels uh, protect. Not only do angels punish, but angels praise. They praise. Uh, now, I want you to watch this. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, let the angels of God worship him. Worship him. Angels live in the presence of God. They are constantly focused on God, and, and that, my friend, is why they have such fear in all of God. My friends, when we get in the presence of God, we can have nothing but fear and awe. Oh, praise his holy name for who he is. If we will have uh, not have a healthy, holy fear of God, then um, it's, it's uh, useless, uh, really, in spending, um, uh, you know, spending time um we, we must be in his presence. Acts 4.13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And that's what I'm trying to say. When you've been in the presence of Jesus, it's reflected by your disposition. Now, Revelation 1, uh, Revelation 4.12 says, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. 
Oh, praise his holy name. Revelation 7, 11, and all the angels stood around the throne and worshiped God saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might to our God forever and forever. Amen. Revelation eleven sixteen says they fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give Thanks uh, to you, O oh God, Lord God Almighty, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reign. And let me tell you something. We can learn some things from uh, angels about worship. If we, if they who are pure in the presence of God fall down before God, time and time again, how often should we fall down before God. The angels have a healthy, holy fear of God because uh, uh, they are in his presence and we ought to have the fear of God because we are headed there ourselves. Heaven is our home and one of these days we will be with the Lord God Almighty forever. And so uh, if, if angels uh, if they worship and they are in that presence now, how much more should we worship right now? But oh, how wonderful to know that we can have a fear of God now because we're in his presence now. God is omnipresent. God is present everywhere. And God is everywhere all at the same time. And when we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, he takes up residence in us. And because he resides in us, we can have that holy celebration within us. Angels praise God. And, and, and we read once again about that in uh, Psalm 148, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise him. All the angels praise him. Praise uh, all of his host. And so tonight, uh, let me just share that uh, we're here uh, to praise God. We're here to honor his name. We're here to live that name which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. We lift him, we praise him, we exalt him, we honor him, and he is uh, first place in our lives. And we learn all of that from as we study about the worship of angels and the worship that they have for the Lord God Almighty. Psalm 29 verses 1 and 2 says, Given to us the Lord, O oh, you mighty ones, given to the Lord glory and strength, given to the Lord um, the glory due to his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. God's angels are worshiping angels and they worship God and that's part of their responsibility. You see, they do uh, many things. They proclaim, they protect, they punish, but they praise. And that's one thing that we do not need to forget as we study about angels. Now, as I said from the own set of this study, we don't worship angels. Uh, uh, angels are higher than we are right now, but one day we will be higher than them. And so uh, uh, we need to understand that they are not to be worshiped. Uh, we only have one person to worship, and that's the Lord God Almighty. And we worship him and we glorify him and we honor him and we praise him. And the moment he moves into our life through a relationship with Jesus Christ, he becomes number one and he so orders our life. And the good news is when he comes in and we become one of his children, he is a jealous God. He's a caring God. He's a compassionate God. He's a loving God. He's an everlasting, eternal God. 
He's a friend that sticks closer to us than a brother. He's the rock and refuge of our life. He's the strength. He's our almighty one. He's our all in all. He uh, is the great conqueror and any storm that comes our way, he has promised to conquer it and we can conquer it in Jesus Christ. And friend, I was thinking about a few texts today. Um, in him, I, I can do anything. In him, I can accomplish his will. Outside of him, I can't accomplish anything. But when Jesus becomes my Savior, and when he becomes my Lord, I can conquer. His strength becomes my strength. In my weakness, I am made strong because the strong one lives in my life. And so praise God for angels and and uh, we don't worship them, we worship God. But angels are ministering spirits. We have the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, who empowers us, comforts us, uh, strengthens us, uh, allows us to, the ability to live the Christian life. The Holy Spirit's inside of us, but God has also sent ministering spirits to help us in our times of need. My friend tonight, let me encourage you, you're not alone. Uh, in your struggle, you're not by yourself. Uh, as you are uh, backed up into a corner tonight, uh, you're not alone. Uh, hang in there. Trust God. Know that God will come through. This is a crazy season, a crazy world, a, a crazy time, an unprecedented time. I don't know that I've ever seen anything like this during my lifetime. And that's why I believe that Jesus is coming back soon. I really believe that he's coming back soon. I don't know how soon, but I believe really soon he's coming back. But let me tell you, in the meantime, uh, God is sending ministering spirits to help us today, this moment, this hour, this second, uh, right now, uh, you have ministering spirits that God sent your way uh, to help you. And what do they do? They proclaim, they protect, they punish, and they praise. And tonight, I'm so grateful that uh, we have such a Savior, that we have uh, such a, a God who cares that much about us and, and, and helps us to respond in proper ways now, uh, this has been a, a tough, difficult week. When you think, when you take a stand for Christ, um, uh, you're going to be in a majority. You, you're going to get beat up from time to time. Um, and, and this week, I, I, uh, I struggled with some of that. Uh, but you know, but you know, I know that the victor lives inside of me, and I know that there's one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ, and there's not multiple ways. Some guy came at me and said, that's not my religion. Well, I've got news for you. It's not my religion either. It's a relationship. Religion, you see, we we do um, things to to work our way to God. You can't do that. A relationship, Jesus did it all. And so I place my life in his life because he did it all. Mike Creekmore can't do it. Mike Creekmore can't accomplish it. Mike Creekmore can't get to God. I can't get to where God is. But praise God, someone who's at God's right hand, uh, making intercession for me, did everything it took. He lived, died, and he didn't stay dead but three days later, up from the grave he arose, and it's a relationship. I entered a personal relationship with Jesus Christ a number of years ago. He saved my life, changed my life. It's not my religion either, because this is not built on working our way to God. It is a free gift, a free gift. 
uh, of faith, I believe that Jesus lived, died, and rose again, and he did all of that for such a sinner as I am. He loved me. He loved me eternally, and he gave his life for me. And he said, Mike, if you believe in me and ask me to uh, come and live inside of you, come and take up my life in your life, if you'll just do that, you'll live forever. And guess what? I'm going to live forever. I may die physically, but when my heart beats for the last time, and I've got the last little bit of brainwave activity going on. I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. And friend, that's what it's all about. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, tonight. And let me pray as we close this session out. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these last 12 weeks from home that I've been able to uh, give uh, Bible studies uh, uh, just just over uh, over Facebook and YouTube and other mediums of communication. Thank you for that. And Lord, I pray tonight that uh, you will speak uh, to our people, uh, the ones that are listening tonight, the ones that will listen, maybe not live, but a little bit later. I pray that you will speak to our hearts, and I pray that you will touch them with the amazing grace of an amazing God. Thank you for Jesus, his life, death, resurrection. And thank you because he lives today. We shall live also those that believe in him. We love you. We rejoice in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for tuning in uh, tonight. I want to remind you, uh, Sunday morning, we will have one adult uh, Bible study class at 9.30, uh, but we will return to the building this coming Sunday morning, June the 7th, 10.30 in the sanctuary. We'll only have one worship service uh, Sunday. It'll be Sunday morning, 10.30 in the sanctuary, and then next Wednesday night, I will um, come back uh, on, um, uh, well, we'll be back in the church, but um, we're also looking at uh, broadcasting all of these times in the church, uh, starting Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and eventually uh, we will um, add, add to what we're doing, but we're going into the building slowly, uh, meticulously, uh, just uh, as carefully as we can, uh, the environment will be very clean, sanitized, and the environment will be very safe. Uh, socially distancing will be practiced. And so we will start all this on Sunday morning in the sanctuary at 1030. And if you don't have a church home, I pray that you'll join us and uh, come and worship with us. God has placed a burning message on my heart for this coming uh, Sunday morning, just um, I'm fired up about it and uh, can't wait to share what God has shared with me um, as I've studied um, a passage in the book of Jeremiah. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in these many Wednesday nights from my home, uh, but don't stop. Uh, if you don't catch us live, uh, we'll, we'll be online. I've invested in some um, video equipment that will uh, transmit uh, our broadcast a little bit um, better. And so uh, we look forward days ahead. Any way we can serve you, let me know. God bless you, love you, praying for you.